you think the takeaways are? Well, it, it, I'll be honest with you, there were times it was hard to hear. I mean, I know the C-SPAN cameras are panning the room, and if, if I'm looking there looking like I, I've not heard what he just said, I didn't hear what he just said because he either whispered or yelled it. And uh, then, of course, the crowd, uh, the, the, the house got a little noisy there at a couple of times as well. But what are you supposed to do when he when he bashes the energy companies that are keeping us uh, in, in transportation fuel and our houses warm and cool in the summertime? What are you supposed to do when he says we're going to destroy these companies, but we need you for 10 more years? I mean, these are big investments that these companies make. And if you say there's a 10-year time horizon to recollect your investment, guess what? There's a lot of people who just aren't going to show up. And what that means is he doesn't understand what is involved in producing energy in this country. And it's pretty clear that he doesn't because he's he's damaged it so badly. But, <clears throat> Mark, I just got to tell you, uh, stopping for gas on the way to the airport early Monday morning, mm-hmm. Paid a little over three dollars a gallon for gas mm-hmm. in Texas in February. I mean, that's a bad sign because you and I both know by Memorial Day it's going to be four and a half or five dollars a gallon based on <clears throat> historical projections, and and people can't afford it because you drive to the Walmart and if you can find the carton with eighteen eggs in it, <laughs> you can't afford it because it's almost ten bucks. Exactly right. <laughs> and and this is this is what people are feeling, and I don't think. I don't think he spoke to that in a in a way that made sense. But let me just say something because I got to get it off my chest. And you hear uh, like your announcer leading into the to the show today said <clears throat> about cutting Medicare and Medicaid. Look, for the last two years, there have been some significant cuts to Medicare. That's all been done by the administration. That has not been a Republican House of Representatives that did. But you talk to any doctor in the district and ask them. Have, has their reimbursement been cut in the last two years? And they will tell you, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a yes. And the problem is, while those pay cuts that the administration has imposed on our on our docs and nurses, inflation has also eaten away at uh, how much it costs them to deliver that care. So we've got our providers, the ones who got us through the pandemic, we've got them in a terrible bind right now. Now, look, Medicare and Social Security are both backed by trust funds. The trust funds are at risk for exhaustion. When that happens, by law, by current law, there will be adjustments in the benefits paid. Uh, That's the way those things have been set up. So I do think that President Bush tried this, bless his heart, in in, in 2004, 2005, and was not successful. But at some point, that has to be addressed. Uh, To say that we're just never going to do anything is to guarantee that there's going to be benefit reductions for beneficiaries in Social Security and Medicare. Uh, Medicaid is a little different because there's no trust fund involved, and there there perhaps are some dials to turn there. But Medicare and, and, and Social Security, yeah, you've got to do something to shore up the trust fund, as did Senators Dole and Monaghan back in the 80s. They wisely did it in a way that it would go into effect 25 years later, uh, and so people didn't feel it acutely at the time. But there will some types of adjustments made. Everyone knows this. It's not a, as, as Biden would say, this is not a joke. It's not. It's no joke. Re, you know, re, exactly. Call my office. Congressman Michael Burgess is here, and and I thought exactly the same thing. Lisa and I were watching this, and I, I said, look, it sounds great, and everybody's you know in a bipartisan moment of standing ovation. Oh, it's off the table. We're not going to do anything to Social Security or Medicare. And I said, okay, maybe not this year, but this is the definition of kicking the can down the road. And Dr. Burgess made a reference a few minutes ago that I want everybody to know that was from a straight Biden quote when he, he, he grudgingly admitted, you know, we're going to need all this oil industry stuff. We're going to need it for another 10 years. Another 10? And then one presumes, what happens then? And out in in California where they're saying we will only have electric cars on the road or only sell electric cars in what, the next 12 or so years? This is an absolute attack on the fossil fuels industry. And, And here's the bad news part of this. Their expectation, their fantasy is that we will be able to supply the energy needs of the country with offshore wind. I mean, this is the craziest thing I, I have ever heard. But I'm I'm sitting right above Jennifer Granholm, who's on the in the cabinet, yep. and this is her this is her main push. They want offshore wind to replace oil and gas in this country. It can't work. No. And, <laughs> and, look, but you know, 
no one likes transmission lines. And we we're dealing with some issues in the district. But in order for them to get power from A to B, the in the bipartisan infrastructure bill, they have given FERC, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, they've given FERC the ability to cite power lines wherever they want. Uh, do you think people are going to be happy with that when they find out what's occurred there? Look, it, it, these are... There are a lot of problems facing this country. No question renewables are part of the energy sure. portfolio going forward. Mm -hmm. But the reliability, which we all learned, unfortunately, the hard way, mm -hmm. reliability is, has got to be front and center. Now, and, and in California, a state with as fragile a grid as you can find, they're saying essentially all of you, all of you need to be charging your electric cards at all times. All right. Uh, Congressman Michael Burgess, in our remaining couple of minutes last night, thank you for being part of our last night analysis team. But it's been a little while since we spoke, and I'd like your sort of brief take on the, the first few weeks of the Kevin McCarthy speakership. I Every day... This man, who I was about 80% on board with, he, he ain't Paul Ryan, he ain't John Boehner, and thank God for both, uh, might not be, you know, the most conservative knife in the drawer, but his leadership, his stewardship so far, I think has been a, a big thumbs up. Yeah, I, I agree with you, and how how brilliant does it look to say we're going to set up a, a select committee on China, and that one of the first things that happens at the end of January <laughs> yeah. is they launch a spy balloon across yeah. the country. Well, even on Trump, which is, I guess, standard fare, uh, and hats off to them for shooting it down over the ocean. That was the right thing to do. They Ooh. just got the wrong ocean. No, they no, it down no, over no, the Aleutian yes. Island. Oh, he's been, he, he, he waited for this show to deliver the best line of the week. I was crestfallen for a moment. I said, oh, no, don't go soft on me, Doc. It was the wrong ocean for those geographically illiterate. He means it should have been down in the waters off the Aleutian Islands before it even gets to Alaska. That is classic. May I steal that and use Please. it with at least... <laughs> I will do so. I will do so. So moving forward in this 118th Congress, uh, and the, I mean, the, the, the battlefield uh, is striped in the way that it is. No great surprises last night at all. The era of big government is absolutely back. Uh, how do you, you know, Hakeem Jeffries is the minority leader and uh, Kevin McCarthy is the speaker. And so there's all kinds of different dynamics. How do you see uh, the, this this very interesting year going? And that's before we even get to the notion of a whole lot of people running for president. Yes, that's true. And pretty clearly, Biden is one of those people. I mean, that was a political speech last night. Uh, I've, I've, <laughs> I've been around long enough now to, to recognize uh, that as this was not an, an aspirational speech given to, to rouse countrymen to, uh, to to do things. This was uh, a speech that he could use for his re-election purposes. Uh, just back to your, your Kevin McCarthy comments, I, and, and I do think you are, you are correct in your instincts on that. Uh, he has navigated some, some, even so far, some, some pretty difficult things. Putting a, putting a bill on the floor last week that I wondered about at the time, I, I got to be honest with you, we're going to do a bill on on the evils of socialism. I mean, come on, who doesn't get that? Well, it turns out half the Democrats don't get that. And very graphically, he demonstrated that of the 200 plus Democrats that are in Congress, 100 voted to say socialism is a bad idea. 100 said, no, it's great. We're fine with it. Uh, it, it was a, it's hard to, to, for me to express to people back home what you're dealing with with today's Democrat Party. That's what you're dealing with. Half of them do not see the evils of socialism. No. Uh, we specifically named Pol Pot and uh, 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 Stalin. I mean, just went down the list of uh, Hugo Chavez, Fidel Castro, naming them, naming them out. And there a hundred of them said, "Yeah, it's, it's good. We're we're happy with." Them. And so I think the speaker is 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 on the right path. He puts some. You know, I'm on the road. Uh, it can be a little dicey sometimes. He's put uh, Tom Massey and Ralph Norman and. Chip Roy, hundred of them said, "Yeah, it's, it's good. We're we're happy with." Them. And so I think the speaker is 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 on the right path. He puts some, you know, I'm on the rules committee. It uh, it can be a little dicey sometimes. He's put uh, Tom Massey and Ralph Norman and Chip Roy, as well as two uh, newer members on the rules committee. It's great to be back to that nine to four ratio that uh, that the rules committee provides yeah, you. You know, you're gonna you're gonna win the votes. But here's the key, and and Thomas Massey. I uh, pointed this out early on. He said, "If if if I'm going to have a problem with something you're bringing to the floor, you're going to know about it in the rules committee." So 
being from coal country, he uses the canary in the coal mine analogy. 